Shark fact number one. Sharks are funky creatures, and you may have also heard that if a shark stops moving, they die. Which is somewhat true, except it doesn't apply to all sharks. Like most living creatures, sharks need to breathe. So I thought, why not make an entire video on how sharks breathe? It hasn't even been 50 videos on this channel and I'm already running out of ideas. Anyways, there are two primary methods of breathing that sharks use. Well, three if you want to get all technical on me. And if you thought of Demon Snayer just now, maybe you should go outside, smell the fresh grass, breathe in the smog ear, listen to the birds and bees, get chased by a rabid dog. That's neat. This probably applies to me too. Never mind, it's too hot outside. But moving on, the two breathing methods are ram ventilation and buckle pumping. With the technical third method being sharks that alternate between the two, which I'm not quite sure if there's a name for. Sharks are basically just fish, and fish breathe oxygen through water. So obviously sharks do the same. And buckle pumping is just where sharks lay down on their little shark bellies and rest while gulping in water through their mouths. The best analogy I can think of for buckle pumping is eating water, because all they really do is open and close their mouths, which forces the water over their gills. Except for weird sharks like the Wabigon shark. The name itself is already a testament to its weirdness. Anyways, the Wabigon is a bottom-dwelling shark, which means it likes staying at the ocean floor. Problem is that its mouth is way too close to the ground when it lays down. So buckle pumping would result in mouthfuls of sand too. Instead it breathes through something called spiracles, which are essentially the shark equivalent to nostrils, except on the top of your head. Wait a second, this is technically a third method of breathing. The internet lied to me. Well, anywho, spiracles basically function as shark snorkels for sharks that bury themselves into the sand. Spiracles in shark species are fairly rare. And according to some sources, spiracles primarily exist in more primitive and unevolved sharks. But then again, spiracles are mainly only used to aid in buckle pumping, specifically in helping sharks not breathe in debris like sand or fragments of coral and other pointy stuff you would not want in your lungs. I can only imagine that breathing in debris would feel like how passing a kidney stone feels. There are other shark species that can incorporate spiracles into their buckle pumping. I only used the Wabagon because I thought the name was funny. Spiracles are only really used for bottom dwellers or sharks that burrow underneath the sand. Okay, back on to the main methods of breathing. Since we covered, well, really the only other method, that just leaves us with ram ventilation. Ram ventilation is also fairly simple. It's just as it sounds. Sharks literally ram water into their throats and out the gills to breathe. That's it. They swim with their mouths ajar and water comes in. They get oxygen and then water comes out of the gills. Easy peasy, gills a wheezy. It's essentially just a human equivalent of letting the oxygen do the breathing for you instead of your lungs. But things get a little more complicated if we decide not to ignore the suffering of certain shark species. You've heard of Sisyphus, right? You know, the wonky guy who pushes a boulder to the top of a hill only for it to roll back down and he's doomed to repeat it for all of eternity. Depending on what iteration of the story we're working with, he's either forced to do it because of his numerous crimes or my personal favorite is that he's just a stubborn bastard with OCD and he believes that he can make it stay at the top. Which is just my personal headcanon. So I'll just be using this version of the story. Anyways, in short, Sisyphus is doomed to perpetually push a boulder up a hill. Now, if we take pushing and replace it with swimming, then also replace the boulder with water, we get obligate ram ventilation. Which, if you'll notice, pretty much means they're obligated to use ram ventilation. And you may find yourself asking, why are they obligated to do so? Well, if you recall, it's a method of breathing. Which means if they don't do it, they die. Yep, we've successfully introduced a new original character. Get ready for Shark Sisyphus. Now, before we get into Shark Sisyphus, let's go into a bit more detail on ram ventilation. All sharks are capable of using ram ventilation. 
And just as a quick word of advice, don't use AI to do research since AI apparently can't understand what capable of using connotates. So if you ask AI if all sharks are capable of using RAM ventilation, then it'll tell you no. Even so, the answer is actually yes. Anatomically speaking, as long as a shark has gills, then they can use RAM ventilation. Even if some sharks like the nurse shark got to use only buckle pumping to breathe. Okay, now for the sake of not biting my tongue, I'll just refer to obligate RAM ventilators as ORVs or ORVs, whichever one I feel like using at the moment. But to clarify, ORVs can only use RAM ventilation, hence the obligate. Free will is a lie. Sisyphus has it easy compared to these guys. He just gets tired from pushing a lump of stone. Why are sharks have to be perpetually swimming if they want to, you know, not die? If they stop swimming, then they straight up just die. And guess what they die from? Drowning. Imagine being an aquatic animal that only lives in water. And drowning. What even is evolution? But ram ventilation doesn't come without its own benefits. As a trade-off for dying if they stop swimming, ram ventilation is actually slightly more efficient than buckle breathing. Like 5% more efficient according to some completely untrustworthy source. It's definitely the most efficient method of breathing by a small margin. But it's not like efficiency matters to orbs since they really don't have much of a choice in that matter. So with orbs being forced to constantly swim unless they seek death, it dredges up the question of how exactly do ORV sharks sleep? I mean, if you're doomed to perpetually swim until your inevitable demise, that doesn't exactly leave a lot of room for sleep. Well, there's a few theories, and when it comes to scientists and theories, it usually just means they have no idea. Anyways, one theory theorizes that sharks will sleep with only half your brain, while continuing to swim. Pretty relatable, right? That's pretty much how everybody functions nowadays. Except we take it to the extreme and we sleep with all of our brains, save for two brain cells. Others are kind of more so speculations made from observations instead of series. Which I guess technically is what a series is? Well, that was a pointless sentence. Anyways, the science people that study sharks or aquatic life in general have observed that some sharks swim up to the surface before going to sleep. And pretty much just let gravity send them into a nosedive which creates automated breathing while sleeping. The other observation comes from seeing ORV shark species being stationary for extended periods of time without dropping dead. And the general consensus from that observation is that sharks find currents to sleep in so that the currents they're facing pushes water into their mouths while they sleep. Another would be that sharks are able to continue swimming on reflex alone with some species not closing their eyes when they sleep, essentially making it so that they go on autopilot. As for how exactly sharks sleep, well, I won't go into further detail for that. That's a shark fact for another year. All of these theories could be true, because that's the fun part of species diversity. Different species adapt different approaches to their issues. There isn't one reign to rule them all. No, wait, that's not how the saying goes. Nah, I can't remember anyways. But the point is, it's unlikely that all orb shark species use the same method of sleeping. But now that you know all this, you should probably make efforts to not pollute the ocean so sharks don't choke on pieces of plastic. Otherwise, some shark god may decide to start summoning sharknados. And if we wrap things up by going back to the theory that sharks with spiracles are the more primitive ones, then sharks are kind of evolving. Just backwards. I don't see how evolving into a ticking time bomb is conducive towards one survival. But you can't stop the A-Train, I guess. That mm, reference made no sense. I guess I'll just finish things off with a brief list of some sharks that are ORVs. The Great White, Mako, Hammerhead, and Whale Shark are just a few of them. There's like 20 or so other shark species that also use ORV. As for the rest, you can probably just assume that they either solely use buckle or they use both. Obviously, these aren't all of them. There's like 400 different species of sharks. Which is 400 too many for me to go through and confirm what kind of breezing each and every species use. But from what I've gathered, 
Not even the marine biologists have been able to conclusively determine the exact methods of breathing each shark uses. Since sharks are rather bitey and humans are, well, rather fleshy. Not the greatest of combinations if I do say so myself. It just goes to show that most fields of research are never truly complete and that there's endless amounts of information still left for us to research. The most effective method I can think of for determining the breathing method is just holding a shark in place and seeing if they die, which is just a horrible idea. But I will say that the great white shark is more conclusive in that aspect. We know for certain it's a ORV. So in theory, you could kill a great white shark barehanded. You would just have to, you know, stop a hulking mass of two tons torpedoing at you with your bare hands in their natural habitat. Yeah, you probably won't be coming out the victor in this battle. But yeah, generally, fast swimming sharks are more likely to use ram ventilation since that's just how logic works. While slower moving sharks that are often stationary tend to use buckle pumping. I think at some point I've even used ram ventilation during my pathetic attempts at cardio, where I just run like a slap jawed idiot trying not to die from respiratory failure with my lack of lung capacity. Oh, and also as a fun tidbit, sharks usually have 5 to 7 gills on each side.